Yo, what is going on Fantasy Addicts? I'm your host, That Fantasy Addict, and today we have a 10-team PPR mock draft from the 6th overall selection. Thank you guys so much for all of you guys who have been watching some of my recent videos and leaving support, you know, commenting, liking the video, all that stuff. Thank you guys so much. My videos have been doing really, really well this past week. I appreciate it, guys. It means a lot to me. So if you are new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button because I put out content for fantasy football almost every single day, and I don't want you guys to miss out. With that being said, we are not going to waste any time. We're going to get right into the draft and see what team we get here. And by the way, this mock draft is done on sleeper.app. I'm not sponsored by them, but I choose to do almost all of my mock drafts on sleeper.app because I really do love the format that they have and I just think their mock drafts are better than all of the other sites. So I'll have a link in the description below if you would like to check them out. So first up, Christian McCaffrey followed by Saquon, Derrick Henry, Michael Thomas, and Zeke. And the first thing I see is that Kamara is available. Now this normally doesn't happen. I would not rely on this happening in real drafts. It's something that might happen in 10% of drafts but it looks like it happened in this mock draft and this doesn't usually happen in these mock drafts so don't think that this is something that normally happens don't worry it's not like the adps on here are really really bad you know he was supposed to go fourth overall that is his adp on here which is normal but not everyone you know does exactly what people expect you to do so i think this is a fair representation of what would normally happen and kamara is the pick here he's going to see positive touchdown regression there's no doubt about it. He is not injury prone like Dallin Cook. He doesn't have as many question marks as guys like Drake and Joe Mixon. Kamara, super safe with a ton of upside. He is definitely the pick right here. Then after we take him, we see Dalvin Cook go, followed by Kenyon Drake, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, Joe Mixon, DeAndre Hopkins, Nick Chubb, and Miles Sanders. So let's take a look at the running backs available. My top guy is definitely Josh Jacobs. I also like Eckler, Aaron Jones, and CEH, but no doubt Josh Jacobs is the top running back here. At wide receiver, Julio Jones and Chris Godwin are both available. I have Godwin ahead of Julio Jones. And then at tight end, both Kelsey and Kittle are available. But I think Jacobs is definitely the best play here. He normally goes in the early second round in 10 team drafts so i am a little surprised that he fell but it's not that crazy this will happen in many drafts many real drafts so it's not something like kamara falling to the sixth where it's very very strange i think josh jacobs falling to the 205 is fairly reasonable and i'll definitely take him here he doesn't have the receiving upside that eckler has but he is going to get so many carries and he will probably have more targets than he did last year. I like this offense. Josh Jacobs is a great player, and he's about to enter his prime. So Josh Jacobs is definitely the play right here. Then Julio Jones goes, followed by Godwin, Aaron Jones, Eckler, CEH, Mahomes, Galladay, George Kittle, Adam Thielen, and Lamar Jackson. So I saw at running back there wasn't anyone worth it. Todd Gurley, James Conner, Fournette, don't like them. My top guys would be Le'Veon Bell and Chris Carson, but I could definitely wait another round for them. Then we have Mike Evans, Allen Robinson, Juju. All those guys are solid receivers, but none of them really stand out to me. But what I do see is that Kittle went, but Travis Kelsey didn't. And it's very strange because I believe in multiple mock drafts that I've done recently, this has happened. So I am seeing more people be really, really high on Kittle now that Raheem Mostert requested a trade. And of course, Debo Samuel got injured earlier this offseason. So it's not too surprising that George Kittle is higher than Kelsey in some people's rankings, but it's actually happening much more often than I would expect it. Not only on the sleeper mock drafts, but also just on Twitter I see a lot of people ranking Kittle higher. So it's not something that you guys should just not expect to happen because it definitely could happen in some of your real drafts. But with that being said, Kelsey is my tight end one and 
He is the best there is. He's done it for years. There's no reason why he won't do it again this year. Kelsey is the guy here. I love getting Kelsey in the middle of the third round in 10-team mock drafts. Then Mike Evans goes, followed by James Conner, Gurley, David Johnson, Leonard Fournette, Le'Veon Bell, Melvin Gordon, and Allen Robinson. Now, I was a little concerned there because six running backs went in a row, and I'm pretty sure the next running back up would have been, yep, Chris Carson. So I'm very glad that that team who took Allen Robinson decided to not take Chris Carson because I think I will be taking him. But let's do a quick check at other positions. We have Juju, who I like, but other guys who I like are DJ Moore, Cooper Cup, Ridley, Robert Woods. All these guys should be available with our next pick. Not all of them, but one of them will be available with our next pick. And after Chris Carson, there is a significant drop off at the running back position. So Chris Carson is great. Rashad Penny tore his ACL late into last season. He's not going to be playing week one. And even when he returns, he's going to be rusty. He might get re-injured. Carlos Hyde is not a huge threat to Chris Carson. He might get a few carries, might get a few touchdowns, but Chris Carson is the man here. We know he's good. Pete Carroll loves him. Then OBJ goes followed by DJ Moore, Juju, Mark Ingram, Devin Singletary, Cooper Cup, Jonathan Taylor, David Montgomery, Mark Andrews, and... Amari Cooper. So, very, very close. Ridley almost didn't fall to me, but luckily he did. Now, recently, I've been getting a lot of players fall to me, very luckily, and this draft is no different. I'm very used to players getting snubbed right before my pick, but now we had Chris Carson fall to us, Travis Kelsey fall to us, Kamara and Josh Jacobs fall to us, and now we have Ridley falling to us. He normally goes in 10-team PPR mock drafts in the late fourth round, and he's fallen all the way to the mid-fifth round. Super happy about that. He was almost outscoring Julio Jones in points per game through week 14. Now, Ridley was out week 15, 16, and 17, so that heavily inflated Julio's stats. But when they were playing together, they were almost neck and neck in terms of points. Ridley is going to be a monster. He's a third-year receiver. I love Ridley this season. Then DJ Chark goes, followed by Tyler Lockett, A.J. Brown, Robert Woods, D.K. Metcalf, Zach Ertz, Kyler, and Kareem Hunt. So the first thing I see is that McLaurin is available, who is one of my top targets at the wide receiver position. At running back, we have Cam Akers available, but I only have one wide receiver, and I would like to get a second receiver before I take another running back. So at wide receiver, McLaurin is my favorite guy here, no doubt about it. Sure, Keenan Allen is very, very safe, and I would not blame you if you took Keenan Allen here, but I think McLaurin's upside is just too good to pass up. I wouldn't take Hilton, I wouldn't take Sutton, I wouldn't take Diggs, wouldn't take any of the other guys. It's between Keenan Allen and McLaurin, but McLaurin has a safety net because we know he is a great phenomenal, super talented player, but he has legitimate top five upside. I love him even more in Dynasty than in Redraft, but still in Redraft, I love him. He's one of my top targets in these middle rounds. So McLaurin is my guy here. Very happy to have him as my wide receiver too. Then Keenan Allen goes, followed by Cam Akers, T.Y. Hilton, Cortland Sutton, DeAndre Swift, Hollywood Brown, Stephon Diggs, Russell Wilson, Dak Prescott, and Darren Waller. So it's our pick once again, and at wide receiver, we have Devontae Parker, Michael Gallup, Tyler Boyd. I like all those players. At running back, we have Raheem Mostert, who I'm not a fan of. Same with Damian Williams, not a fan of him. But Ronald Jones, James White, Dobbins, Darius Geis, and Tevin Coleman, huge fans of all of them. But I should be able to wait around and still get one of them. So we will probably pass up on them. If we look at quarterback... Deshaun Watson is available. So we're going to test something out. And I've done this a few times, I believe mostly in 12-team PPR mock drafts, testing out the draft strategy of taking a quarterback relatively early, as in taking either Mahomes, Lamar, Kyler, Russell Wilson, Dak, or Deshaun Watson, one of those top six quarterbacks. And we're going to do this in this draft because we have a pretty good roster and wide receivers. We have great running backs. We have the best tight end. So we're going to see what happens in a 10-team PPR mock draft where we take Deshaun Watson before 
a lot of other teams have taken their quarterback. So we'll take Deshaun Watson here. Then Raheem Mostert goes, followed by Gronk, Drew Brees, AJ Green, Devontae Parker, Damian Williams, Edelman, and James White. And one thing I would like to touch on is for Watson, even though yes, people are concerned about DeAndre Hopkins, and rightfully so, he's not there and he was Deshaun Watson's number one target. At the end of the day, Deshaun Watson is going to be rushing for more touchdowns now with Hopkins gone. And to be honest, in most leagues, that's beneficial. Yes, some leagues you have six point passing touchdowns, but most leagues, the touchdowns for passing are four points. So he's getting an extra two points for these rushing touchdowns instead of the passing touchdowns. Obviously, he'll still have 20 or more passing touchdowns, but I would not be surprised if he saw 10 rushing touchdowns this upcoming season. So now let's look at the running backs and wide receivers available. At running back, we have Ronald Jones, Dobbins, Darius Geis, and Coleman. Love all of those guys. And at wide receiver, we have Michael Gallup, Tyler Boyd, and Marvin Jones. I want Marvin Jones. I want him badly, but I think I can wait another round on him. As far as running backs go, I probably can't wait another round to get Coleman, Geis, Dobbins, or Ronald Jones. And if I try to wait, it'll be very risky. So we have to decide which one we want now. I feel super confident in my top three running backs, really. You know, Carson, Kamara, and Jacobs are all very safe options. So I don't need a super, super safe running back like J.K. Dobbins or Ronald Jones. Now, Ronald Jones isn't the safest, but I think Geis and Coleman have higher upside with more risk. So I'm going to go with one of them. It's really between Geis and Coleman. You could go either way. And honestly, if you took Dobbins or Ronald Jones, I wouldn't really fault you that much. But I want Geis or Coleman here. Now, if Raheem Mostert gets traded or if there's more talk about him getting traded, I would take Coleman here. But right now, I do have Darius Geis higher in my rankings. The only thing holding him back is injuries. But if he doesn't get injured, he is going to be a great fantasy asset this season. Then Ronald Jones goes followed by Dobbins, Tevin Coleman, Brandon Cooks, Hayden Hurst, Marlon Mack, Sony Michelle, Michael Gallup, Jarvis Landry, and Will Fuller. Was really hoping Michael Gallup fell right there, but of course he didn't. Now Tyler Boyd did fall, but I prefer Marvin Jones. And if I take Tyler Boyd, there's probably like a 60-70% chance that Marvin Jones goes, and I don't want to risk it. I only have two wide receivers. I don't want to try to get Tyler Boyd hoping that Marvin Jones falls. I'm just going to take the best wide receiver available because I only have two wide receivers. And for me, the best wide receiver is Marvin Jones. He missed three games last season, still finished as a top 30 wide receiver, even with Matt Stafford gone for half the season. Now Marvin Jones is going as something like the wide receiver 40. It makes no sense. He's going to be great. He might not be a league winner, but he can contribute to winning a fantasy league for sure. I absolutely love Marvin Jones this season. He's almost as good as Galladay on a points per game basis whenever they're playing together, yet you can get him like seven rounds later. So love Marvin Jones here. Then Debo Samuel goes, followed by Jordan Howard, Tyler Boyd, Keyshawn Vaughn, Tariq Cohen, Emmanuel Sanders, Philip Lindsay, and Tyler Higby. And now it is our pick once again. So at running back, Matt Breed is available, who I am a big fan of. Chan Gailey has a history of targeting running backs a lot, even if they're not great pass catchers. Matt Breida isn't a great pass catcher, but he's the best pass catching running back on this offense. I think Chan Gailey is going to get him a lot of targets for sure, so we could definitely take him here. Then at wide receiver, C.D. Lamb, Darius Slayton are both decent options, but I'm cool with the wide receivers that I have. I feel very confident in Ridley and pretty confident in McLaurin, but I know that one of McLaurin or Marvin Jones will be very, very good. So I'm just going to load up on running backs because that is always a good strategy to do. We're going to take Matt Breida. He is going to be the running back to own in this backfield. Love Matt Breida there. Then Deontay Johnson goes, followed by C.D. Lamb, Alexander Madison, Tom Brady, Evan Ingram, Josh Allen, Matt Ryan, Aaron Rodgers, San Francisco defense, and Zach Moss. And now it is our pick once again. And at wide receiver, Darius Slayton fell to us. So we're going to take him here. He is a phenomenal option. Darius Slayton, 
did very well last season. And yes, there is some competition in New York with Golden Tate, with Sterling Shepard, with Evan Ingram for the five games that he's probably going to play this season. With Saquon Barkley, there are a lot of targets, but this team is going to be running a lot of plays. Their defense is bad. It's all offense here in New York, and Slayton should be the wide receiver one here. No, he's not going to win you your league, but I think that he is a solid option, relatively safe with some upside as well, especially if Golden Tate and or Sterling Shepard go down. Then after we take him, Carson Wentz goes, followed by McCall Hardman, Hunter Henry, Jerry Judy, Jared Cook, Carrion Johnson, Buffalo Defense, and Latavius Murray. So let's look at our roster. We have one, two, three, four, five running backs and one, two, three, four receivers. So we can take a running back or receiver here, but we have one more bench spot and that's going to go to a tight end. I always take a backup tight end because there's so much value late into these drafts. So at wide receiver, Jamison Crowder, Jalen Rieger, and Akil Harry are all good options. At running back, Antonio Gibson is available. And when I have Darius Geis, I like to pair him up with Antonio Gibson. This is because, first of all, even if they're both playing, you could definitely start both of them. Like, it's not the best lineup, but they are both viable options even when playing together. But if Antonio Gibson or Darius Geis goes down, the other one is definitely an RB2, no doubt about it. So I wouldn't consider him a handcuff. I would consider him more like a player who has standalone value, even if Geis is playing. But if Geis goes down, then Gibson has a ton of value and vice versa. If Gibson goes down, Geis has a ton of value. So since I have Geis, I really want to get Antonio Gibson here and I'm going to draft him. Then Stafford goes, followed by Tony Pollard, Chase Edmonds, Jamison Crowder, Henry Ruggs, Justin Jefferson, Baltimore defense, Christian Kirk, Henderson, and Duke Johnson. So let's look at the tight ends, who we can put on our bench. Remember, we have Travis Kelsey as our tight end one. So our backup tight end, we're just looking for someone to fill in for Kelsey. And I'm going to take Noah Fant here because he has a decent floor every single week, but he has tremendous upside. Yes, he has some risk, but it's just a little more risk than the other tight ends available have with so much more potential. And if he breaks out as a top five, top seven tight end, which I could absolutely see happening, then he has a ton of trade value, no doubt about it. So we're going to take Noah Fant here. The only concern that I have is the competition in this offense. But assuming that they give Noah Fant a decent amount of targets, Noah Fant is going to beast out this season. Then Daniel Jones goes, followed by Cam Newton, Pittsburgh defense, Chicago defense, Joe Burrow, Justin Tucker, Harrison Butker, and New England defense. So it's our pick, and we're just going to take a defense. And it's either the Vikings or the Chargers defense here. I'll go with the Chargers defense, though, because first of all, they have a good defense in general. They're going to have a slow-paced offense, and I usually stream defenses. Streaming defenses is just where I found the most success for the cheapest price on draft day, and the Chargers have a great week one matchup. So no reason not to take the Chargers defense here. So we are going to draft them here in the 14th round. Then New Orleans defense goes, followed by New Orleans' kicker, Will Lutz. Tampa Bay defense, TJ Hawkinson, Seattle defense, Greg Zerline, Young Hoku, Robbie Gould, Justin Jackson, and Fairbairn. So now we are just looking at the kickers available, and there's Zane Gonzalez, there's Matt Prater, there's Jake Elliott, there's Matt Gay. I've been taking Matt Gay in pretty much every draft, so I'm going to do it this draft again as well, because he's on a Tom Brady-led offense. Steven Goskowski always did great under a very, very good Tom Brady-led offense that was also very fast-paced, and Matt Gay should do the same thing. He's a good kicker, and any kicker under a Tom Brady-led offense is going to do good as long as he doesn't miss a ton of field goals. And Matt Gay proved last season that he's not going to miss a ton of field goals. So then Zane Gonzalez goes, followed by Jalen Rieger, Boston Scott, and Matt Prater. But wait, before you click off of this video, because I know you're about to, so before you click off, make sure to stay around for the next three minutes because these three minutes are the most important three minutes of this entire video. In these three minutes, we are going to be doing a recap of our team 
and give our team a draft grade. So first up, Deshaun Watson at quarterback. Very, very solid quarterback. Very happy to have him. Top six quarterback for sure. At running back, Kamara and Josh Jacobs. Very, very good running back core. Super happy with that. I love that running back core, especially when you add in Chris Carson as our RB3. Very strong running back core. And then you add in the fact that we have the number one tight end in all of fantasy football, Travis Kelsey. That is just awesome. There's no reason why I would ever take anyone besides Travis Kelsey with that third round pick. Then at wide receiver, Calvin Ridley and Terry McLaurin. Love both these players. Obviously, it's not the best wide receiver duo that you can think of, but they get the job done. And I can definitely see Ridley finishing as a wide receiver one and McLaurin finishing as a wide receiver two. So if I have the best tight end, two of the best running backs, one of the best quarterbacks, and two solid receivers, that is just tremendous. Then kicker and defenses don't really matter, so we're going to ignore them. At running back on our bench, we have Darius Geis and Matt Breda, as well as Antonio Gibson. Nothing super spectacular, but in general, it's just a very good bench for running backs, I think. And then at wide receiver on our bench, we have Marvin Jones and Darius Slayton. Once again, nothing crazy, but it's still just a overall very good bench for wide receivers. And our backup tight end is Noah Fant, who I'm a huge fan of. High risk, but high reward. And actually, it's not that big of a risk because he's a 13th round pick. Now, he could definitely bust, but I think that there's a great chance that he is a top five or top seven tight end. So what do I think of this team? Well, to start, I think that this starting roster is my favorite of all of the 10-team PPR mock drafts that I've done, but the bench definitely isn't my favorite. There's nothing that stands out about my bench. Love the starting lineup. The starting lineup is probably an A+. The bench, on the other hand, is a B or a B+. So I'm going to compensate by giving this team an A- and a half, which if you don't watch my videos, that just means they're in between an A- and an A. So I love this roster. I love the starting roster. If no one gets injured, then this is a league winning team for sure. But injuries happen in football. We all know that. And I don't think our bench is spectacular. I think they're good. I, I think it's a solid bench, B or a B plus bench, but it's nothing spectacular. So this team gets in between an A minus and an A or an A minus and a half, as I like to call it. But with that being said, I'm sure a lot of you guys disagree. So if you disagree, please let me know in the comments below what draft grade you would give this. Or if you agree, let me know. If you would give this an A minus and a half, let me know because I would be super happy to find out if you guys completely agree with me. But I'm not expecting all of you guys to agree 100% with me. So let me know in the comments below what you would grade this team. And also, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button because I can't stress it enough. It helps me out so much. It's free for you guys to do. It shows your support for the video and it helps me get this video out to more people. So I'd really appreciate it if you enjoyed to hit that thumbs up button. And if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already because I put out fantasy football content almost every single day. I do five to seven videos per week and I don't want you guys to miss out. With that being said, I have nothing left to say. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Peace.